All right, Phil. Thanks for being here, bro. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you virtually, I guess. And um, thanks for sending me your book today. And I will admit, yeah, I flipped through it, but I didn't get a chance to really no, yeah, jump in on it and stuff. But it looks pretty interesting based on yeah. like I, when I was flipping through it, like the movies you had listed out. And I guess you mm-hmm. gave a little. I guess you can explain it obviously better than me, but you give out movies that mean a lot, have meant a lot to you in your life, basically. Yeah, um, you know, I went through a really traumatic time in my life. Um, started watching movies. Uh, I felt a very close connection between the movies that I was watching and my life and just started writing. And I never really like aimed to write a book. Uh, it wasn't my plan, uh, but it just happened because, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just, it just got to happen. So it's kind of how life works, right? Things just fall into place and just happen. But can we talk about whatever happened that was uh, the trauma in your life is that something we can. We yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, without getting into incredible detail, um, I was, uh, training for, you know, a job, I uh, was a very high paying job. Um, I went through all the training past it and everything. And, and then I'm out, you know, I'm with, I'm with this specific, uh, company, you know, that I'm working with and, you know, there's only four people that I'm working with this entire company. And, uh, we had plans, like, you know, I was engaged to my wife now, which, you know, we're married, which is like the greatest thing. Um, but we had all these plans and, you know, the plans involved, you know, staying at the job and, you know, living in the specific place and, you know, all this stuff. And I was so excited, you know, I was so excited and they were telling me to lie, um, on my reports. Uh, they were telling me to do all these things that I felt, you know, pretty, pretty terrible about, honestly. Um, and I want to get your was, ethics, right. You what's want, that? Go to get your ethics and morals and values. Oh, absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Well, well, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but why were they to make their numbers look good and make yeah. it? Yeah. So in, in order for, in order for them, um, they basically had to propose it. Um, what they were proposing just to show that there was activity, that there were things happening Okay. Um, in order for, you, you know, money um, for financial gain, really, um, in order to keep their jobs too. Sure. And they weren't, they weren't getting paid, you know, a little bit, they were getting paid a lot and, you know, everybody was getting paid a lot. And um, so it was a rough experience because they looked at me and they were like, you don't want, you don't want to do this. And I was like, no. And they were like, you don't belong here. And so that was really tough because, you know, I'm engaged and we had all these plans and all of a sudden, you know, people are like, Oh, it's a curveball. It wasn't like a curveball. It was like, I got beamed in the head, bro. Like I really did. And that's what it felt like. Um, and I was down, I was knocked out for a while. Um, you know, we eventually, we, we got, um, a lawyer, you know, we were trying to um, figure, I didn't want to sue. I don't want to sue. And I'm not, I'm not about that. You know, I don't do that. Okay. Um, but, you know, it was just to try to transfer somewhere else or try to get a job somewhere else. And it just didn't work out. And, you know, again, it was just like, oh, man. So I was really low. I was really probably in like one of the lowest places that I've ever been. Um, a really low, um, low place. And you know, I started watching movies and that's honestly, you know, where it all came from. You know, I was like sitting down, I was watching the Count of Monte Cristo in 2000, you know, have you ever seen that one? Uh, it's been a long time, but yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. The 2002 yeah. version, the one with Jim Caviezel. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I saw this dude, his name's Edmund and he was like engaged. He was getting promoted at his job. He was like liked by like everyone like around him and he had like a lot of favor a lot of great things happening in his life and like nothing could stop him and he was so happy and then all of a sudden one of his best friends so to speak gets involved and falsely accuses him of doing something wrong this dude edmund gets shipped off to a prison island and he's there he's exiled he's just sitting there and everything gets taken from him so that's how I felt. Um, that's honestly where it came from, you know, where this whole entire journey came from. So, yeah. Well, let's backtrack a little bit. So going yeah. into that job. Yeah. Is that this, the culture there? I mean, did you have any idea that's just kind of what they did or was it just kind of, you know, yeah. kind of thing? 
Yeah. Um, you know, it was definitely, I didn't really know what I was getting into, um, because the, the person's position that I took over, um, he seemed like a cool dude, but like he retired, like while I was training and while I was going through all these things. And then I came and, you know, it just, it wasn't the greatest experience. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect what I was about to get dealt with. Yeah. Um, so that was a difficult experience for sure. So was this like a dream job at the time for you though? Or was it just, this is a dream job. This is it. Damn. This was a, like sailing off into the sunset. This is my career. This is my life. Um, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen. And it got absolutely railroaded. Mm, that's it. So it's been a lot, man. It's been honestly, forgiveness has been like really tough, but it's been something I've had to do because it's just, it would hold me captive, you know, and I'd just be like, I got to forgive these guys, you know, because I just got to move forward from this. And it was hard. There were some days where, you know, certain cars or certain things would come up and I would just be like triggered, you know, about like the situation or whatever. So, yeah. Well, it didn't affect your relationship at all or did it a little bit. Honestly, when everything happened, you know, I remember being in that moment Um, and Catherine, my wife now, she, she said, you know, we're still getting married. I remember, I remember when she said that and, you know, it really stuck to me because I was just like this woman, you know, but, um, back to the tough times and support. I mean, you know, I can't relate to a lot of that experience, but I mean, based on stories, movies, other people I've listened to and heard, you know, some people when times get tough, you know, sometimes that's the you know, the, what the Charlotte broke the camel's back, that, you know, the relationships go south and like, oh, this guy's not going to do anything with this life or even vice versa. The girl's not going to do with their life. I'm out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. And then, and that just adds to the stress even onto it, you know, to somebody who's yeah. already down, you know, being kicked while they're down and just, yep. and it's tough to bounce back. So I, I love a good underdog story, just especially like you just saying, yeah. you found something to invest yourself in and, you know, I guess do a curve back up onto the positive side of life. Honestly, I used my pain for something, um, you know, and, and honestly it was really hard because I was like, this is my heart going out there for everybody to see. And it took me a little bit. Um, then I had a conversation with someone and they were honestly, they were the people that were going to publish the book and they were like, do it. And they like encouraged me to do it. And, you know, it was a soft launch in 2018. Um, you know, soft launch and didn't really tell anybody about it, made it like super secret because I was like, this is my heart. Like, I don't want people to see it and like all that stuff. We had like a fun, like Red Robin, you know, we were at Red Robin. We did like a release party. It was fun. Um, and Catherine was like, you need to talk to Barnes and Noble and, uh, the local Barnes and Noble. And I was like, okay. So I went over there and I was like, yeah, I'm coming out with a book on this day. And they were like, all right, we'll order it. We'll have it here on day, day release. I was like, okay, that's crazy. And then the summer came of 2019 and all of a sudden it was in like 500 plus Barnes and Noble stores. Nice. And I was like, what the heck is going on? (laughs) And all of a sudden I got messages and letters from people. I never thought I would get messages and letters from, um, and it was honestly a real big testimony of, it felt like redemption. It felt like redemption from a lot of what I've been through. And, you know, it was really, it was really awesome. I had opportunities to go, um, you know, to Georgia and do some signings. And that was crazy. That was like an out of body sort of experience. That was like crazy. Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, that's literally the message. And, you know, that's what I really want to encourage people to do is that if you're going through anything, if you're going through any sort of pain or trauma or anything that just work through it, you know? Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you mean, man. I mean, find yeah. something that you can get, like I just said, get, you know, get you passionate about something again, you know, put your energy into that and make it, yeah. even if it's something that you've never done before, it's something that you've always wanted to do. Yeah. Turn it, you yeah. know, turn it into something great. But yeah, I mean, man. have you ever written or did anything before that? No, well, a lot of what I did, like when I was in middle school, high school, um, I would just write, I would just like, you know, 
write my thoughts, like process things, like all this stuff. And then like when I moved out, I saw that I had like seven or eight journals filled with like all my thoughts and like everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wrote a lot. Yeah. And I realized that writing, you know, I wasn't the best writer. I wasn't, I wasn't the best writer growing up or like anything like that. I can relate to that. But I realized, yeah, like I realized like I used it as an outlet. And so, yeah, it was, it was something that I've always used as an outlet. You know, I've talked to a lot, a lot of people on here, well, not a lot, but a few people on here who do journaling just yeah. as a sign of like, you know, kind of a meditation, I guess, and getting mm-hmm. your thoughts out, you know, yeah. your thoughts that way. And just, it's something yeah. that I haven't done, but I keep wanting to yeah. try to get into because there's it seems to be a lot of great benefits from it. You know, a lot of success yeah. people seem to do it. Yeah. I'm, well, what it is, is, uh, you know, I went to college, went to Nyack College, um, and we had this really intense class, bro. Like it was called personal spiritual formation. And it was just like, people were like, Oh my gosh, you're taking that class. Like it was like intense. Okay. Basically like you would walk through a lot of the stuff that you've been through in your life. That's, you know, basically what it was. Sure. And, uh, he talked about grief journaling. And, uh, this guy basically said like, you know, we live in a world of loss, you know, you're, you're, you're open to that. Like immediately when, you know, you're taken away from the safety of your mother's womb. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, he started going in and talking about how, you know, loss is a part of life. We deal with losses in our lives and all the stuff. And he encouraged us to talk about the deep losses that we went through in our lives. And I started writing. I wrote a lot, you know, it was, it was kind of tough in the beginning. Cause I was like, Oh, I just, you know, I lost this, but you know, there are other things going on in other people's lives that are like more important and like all this stuff. But then I started realizing like, no, like I need to validate what's going on in my life and realize that like loss is lost no matter what. So yeah, that was something that really helped me, I guess, in this process of writing. So your professor was saying his theory was like life is about loss. Well, I mean, he was, he wasn't saying life is about loss. You know, but like that wasn't like the main point. Okay. Like you don't obviously don't want to live in the loss. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to live in, you know, eventually move on and live in victory and you know, walk in hope and like all that stuff. But processing the loss, uh, processing what you've been through. Uh, because you know, rather than you know, just just being like, okay, this this stinks, and then just like kind of shoving it under a rug or you know, um, taking a beach ball and like putting it underneath like the ocean floor, it's going to pop back up somewhere, you know? So, um, that, that was, that was some of the stuff that I, I walked through and that was some of the stuff that really helped me, you know, kind of on this journey. Yeah. It sounds pretty philosophical, man. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> great because a lot, you know, talking to people, you know, like yourself and others that, you know, I used to think I had my own opinions about stuff and I would form, you know, those opinions and think to myself, that's probably the way it is. But when, you know, I talk to people like you, it's like, Ooh, wait, you know, let's, uh, maybe life, is, you know, life is about loss in a certain way, but it's not always all about loss. Like wow. you said. So, yeah. So that's what I enjoy. Like talking, like thinking out these ideas and like actually thinking out loud and having these conversations and putting them out to the world. It's like, Hey, yeah, it doesn't always have to be like, you know, one thing, the, the, the track that you're on or the track yeah. that you're making, like, you know, things yeah. be different. Yeah, man. Yeah. For real. So, yeah, but do you think a lot of people, when they find themselves going down this negative path, that they just stay in that negative path, and it's hard to overcome, you know, just with just because of life and just social yeah. media and culture, and they yeah, just don't know how to get out of that, you yeah, know, negative comfort zone. I think it depends on the situation, right? Like for me, for example, I got really hurt by people. You know, I got really hurt and rejected, and all this stuff, and I had to walk through processes of forgiving these people. You know, yeah. And uh, I feel like every situation is different. And like, you know, if somebody's dealing with disappointment in their life, you know, they're trying to pursue a dream or they're trying to pursue something in their life, and they're dealing with disappointment after disappointment. Are they going to keep going and trying to pursue that dream, or are they going to sit and just not try anything? You know what I'm saying? Maybe they need motivation. You know, so there's different aspects. Um, you know, even even somebody that you know, it's not necessarily 
it, or it needs to work on their confidence. You know, that's something that they need to work on or whatever. Um, but yeah. How did, how did you learn to forgive them? I mean, what, what did you, Oh my gosh. To forgive people. <sighs> yeah. You know, I'm a faith-based guy, um, you know, and that really helped me, um, especially, um, but I, you know, I started looking at, you know, kind of, you know, what they've done to me and realizing like, look, I could hold on to this forever. Yeah. I could hold on to this pain. I could hold on to this bitterness, uh, this sort of grudge, uh, forever, or I could let it go. And the process on me letting it go was literally forgiving them, literally saying like, like sometimes out loud, just being like, I forgive you, <laughs> like, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and kind of walking through that process and, and almost being like at a point to where, you know, and sometimes I juggle back and forth on this at a point to where, you know, I, I could bless them too, or like I could love, you know, like saying, but that's hard, you know, it's a hard thing. And uh, yeah. So, but you know, cause sometimes, you know, the, you know, I've never been through any terrible, terrible situations, but you know, when I am upset or, got mad or went through a breakup or something. It's just like, I think to myself, this is all time that when I'm feeling down or bad or, you know, whatever feeling you're having at that time. But it's just like, man, why am I wasting all this time feeling this way when mm. I'm using this energy towards something else and that I don't, you know, life is not, you know, life will usually bounce back or, you know, I feel like, and I've read that book, the compound effect. And it's usually if you're doing the right small decisions, mm. in life, it leads to bigger results in the future. Yeah. It's just wow. a book. And it's just like, man, stop, you know, wasting, you know, your whole day just being angry about something mm. small, you know? Mm. Yeah. Some things that that's just a small situation for me, but yeah, you know, I know like something like you went through or like people yeah. were completely down on their luck and stuff. It's just, yeah. It's like, man, it's just like if you got cheated on a relationship, right. Man, how do you forgive that person? How? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, exactly. And, um, it's just tough. It's just, it's just tough. I got, it's yeah. want to do it, but you can't do it. It's just mm -hmm. is it genetics. Is it what, you know? What, yeah. You what? know, and, and I mean, like I said, I'm a faith-based guy, um, you know, and I rely on that and the forgiveness that I've been given. Um, but then I'm like, I can't forgive. And then I just give it all. And I'm just like, listen, I can't do this. God, like I need you, <laughs> you know? Have you always um, been a faith-based guy? That was like 16. Um, you know, that was, that was, that was when, uh, you know, I really, yeah, I really, you know, came to faith and all that. So what, what happened at 16? I mean, what was that? Was yeah. That, um, go down that road or something. I was going through a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those situations where like, I just prayed a real prayer and I was like, God, like, if you're real, show me that you're real. And, uh, you know, I felt like he did. Um, I was going for a walk one day and um, this guy like nearly like ran me over. And I was just like, I would have died right there. Like, and uh, I was going down this path. I was doing whatever I wanted to do, not caring about anything, not even caring about my life. And uh, the guy got out of the car and all this stuff. I feel like it was a wake up call, honestly. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, man. So you almost got hit. Go, what is mm -hmm. down the road? Yeah. yeah. You know how like cars like drive into driveways real slowly? Yeah. Well, this this guy went like screaming fast. Like he was going like a 40 or 50, well, like about 50, you know, somewhere like in a driveway. And yeah, he nearly hit me. So man. Yeah. So, like stories like that, you know, just because you always hear the the opposite of that, you know, just like, oh. You know, hey God, if something's going on, strike me. Or if, like if I'm, I'll do this. If it's bad, strike me down now. Or mm -hmm. I don't want to say it. But then you know, you actually hear somebody who said, "Hey, and there's so many sign that if you're real or whatever." Yeah. And something happens like that. I mean. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I was living that life. I was just like, listen, I don't care about anything. I don't even care about my life. <laughs> <laughs> like during that time, and you know, teenagers, we get super emo like you know, super emotional, and that sure. I was intense and like really philosophical about things and um but you know i feel like i feel like i got met you know in that in that circumstance so yeah and that's when you decided uh like i mean was your did you grow, grow up you know being faith-based and religious no, your parents no not really not really no 
you know, I mean, like I went to, I went to church, a Catholic church or whatever, sure. like on Easter, Christmas, all that, but the typical no, days you're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> That's like yeah. one of my things that people will say that, uh, you know, this, I'm not, just, I'm just generally speaking, yeah. but no, I'm not calling anybody out, but you know, they say I get, they go to church or whatever. And it's just like, Oh, Oh yeah. You know, how often do you go? Like, oh, we go Easter and Christmas. It's like, Oh yeah. 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 That church is the most crowded anyway. It's yeah. Like, okay. So you're like, are you really? Yeah. I mean, that's great that you go. Yeah. But, yeah. I was a creaster. That's what they call it. <laughs> a creasters. A creaster. Yeah. 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 I gotta remember that. Yeah, like Christmas that. Easter. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. So let's go back and get back into your book here though. Yeah, for sure, man. So you went through the trauma, you were down. Yeah. You found some movies and you just started yep. reading to these movies. And yep. that when you started journaling and saying, all right, you know, like the first, I think you wrote about Toy Story and Wreck-It Ralph for the first couple of ones I saw. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, great movies. So I've seen them both. I love them. Yep. So is that when you were just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, let me see how I experienced watching this movie. Is that or what I'm feeling during watching this? Is that kind of how? Yeah. Went? Yeah. You know, I mean, I faced uh, some real big rejection, especially, you know, when it was in that moment where they were just like, you don't belong here. Right. Yeah. And I mean, you remember Toy Story, Andy? Yeah. You know, and when Buzz came into the picture, mm-hmm. Woody was thrown in the oh, man. toy chest. Yeah. So um, are there times in life where we feel that way? Totally. You know, where we feel like we're thrown in the thrown in the toy chest. Um, and that's that's what I felt. Um Wreck it Ralph, you know, Ralph, he wanted to be accepted. He wanted to be a part of the you know, story, so to speak. And you know, he was rejected constantly. Uh, he was, he was the one that was outcast that was left out. And they're really related to me. Uh, they're related to, you know, what I've been through and, you know, yeah. Do you think this is going to be a little bit side tangent here, but yeah, go for it. <clears throat> Cause it's something I've been dealing with personally too, is a little bit of reject. Well, a lot of rejection, bro. Well, that sucks, dude. You get rejected. I got rejected. Yeah. So, do you think people need to, I guess my question is for you, do you think everybody should go through that type of, go through a rejection just to have that experience, you know, just to be a little bit more humble to, to know what it feels like to know. Yeah. I know it's probably tough to that answer, but I mean, like, you know, yeah. you feel like, yeah, that way somebody knows like, Hey, yeah. that's what it feels like. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I, you know, I think if you're pursuing a dream rejection is part of the game, yeah. If it is in terms of a relationship or in terms of something else that doesn't necessarily have to do with the, you know, you keep trying and all that, that's a really tough one, you know, uh, cause you feel rejected, rejected as a person, you know, rather than rejected as your talents and skills, Yeah. which, you know, you can continue to grow on, you know, your talents and skills. Right. But being rejected as a person is a whole other, whole other ball game. And, um, that's, uh, honestly, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> you know, I would, I would want everybody to be accepted and loved. And, yeah. So. Yeah. You know, like I said, that's, I just, you know, I just got out of a relationship and it was part yeah. of me thinking that, that I wasn't enough and that wow. you know, it was something that we could easily fix. Wow. It was like, but it was like, you know, she didn't want to fix it. And I was like, wow. Wait, what? You know, and, and it that's wasn't, not, it wasn't a case like, yeah. Yeah. That we cheated on each other or anything like that. Yeah. I might be doing a little bit of oversharing. No, you're, you're good, man. Don't it, worry about it. Well, you know, even with my listeners or whatever. But anyway, um, but yeah, it was just like, you know, I don't, you know, people you just start to build a shield wall, like not to feel this way again. But also part of me is thinking that, you know, do you need to go down a road like this just to know what it's like? And, wow. and just to have that humbling experience and understand that, you know, I don't want to feel like this again. And just like, you know, how do I not yeah. feel like this again? But you also, you know, don't want to push these feelings aside because I guess yeah. you have these type of feelings too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know that I'm trying to, I'm trying yeah. to, like, do we need kind of to, sense. yeah. Like, do we need to experience loss in order to experience healing? There you, really? go. There you go. Perfect. You know, Perfect. and, Man. and, um, you know, I, I think we going back to that, you know, professor's thought, like we live in a world of loss but we need to be on a path of healing and a path of like moving forward. I think processing our losses, you know, because they come all the time, you know, they come just about every day, mm-hmm. um, whether it's small or big or anything like that, anything in between. I think processing our losses is really important. 
And whether that's, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge proprietor of going to therapy, <laughs> like all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a dude, I cry more than my wife cries. Like I, I do, <laughs> I'm an emotional dude. You know, I, uh, yeah. And that's, that's what it is. I, I feel like walking through, walking through it is definitely, you know, where it's at, it's definitely where it's supposed to be. You know, just, just life experiences. I mean, that's how you yeah. get a person. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you're going through these things and not, I'm just talking about even relationships, but yeah, you know, like, you know, I'm one of these CrossFit guys and even my competitions and stuff, yeah. if I lose an event or whatever, it's like, you know, you get pissed off or whatever, but it also kind of gives you that little extra spark in your training. It's like, sure. oh, man, next time I'm going to make sure I do it this differently or yeah, you know, put a little extra work in, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, you hate to go through it, but you know, it's almost like bullying, you know, somebody Mm -hmm. made an argument one time that, and I know this, we're not, we don't have to go down a bullying road. No, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, But, uh, you know, should somebody go through being bullied just to know what it feels like and know how to overcome that, you know, instead of just being, yeah, you know, I I don't wish, uh, I don't wish pain on anybody. You know? I'm not advocating for uh, by any means, no, but I but do I think that going through the fire forges something great? Yes. I mean that's a weapon, right? I agree. Iron sharpens iron. That's um crazy. you know, and um walking through the fire, you become stronger. Um but it's uh yeah, I yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, just we go down these roads, but you know, I don't want to say everybody's just generally speaking again, but parents, yeah, so with these younger generations do not they keep their children wow. these uh, I read a book, Colin of the American Mind. So yeah, so the uh the first part of the book, and I've talked about this before, so I'm sorry, folks, but yeah, no, you know, they didn't want their children to eat peanuts because there were so many high rates of you know, people being allergic to peanuts or children okay. to peanuts. Right. So they, they there was some kind of test or study they did that they actually gave uh, young. And I might be butchering this completely, but they gave yeah. kids and children they they uh, exposed them to peanuts and nuts and let yeah. them, and not kids who they would not let them eat the nuts at all. But kids who actually were exposed to it actually were able to overcome other obstacles as far wow. as food allergies and stuff in their life. Or the other ones wow. they, they even developed more out yeah. just because they were not ever exposed to it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the uh, census of where I'm coming from here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, being operated from a place of fear, right. Yeah. You know, if, if you're operating from that place, that's not the best place to be, yeah. you know, and, uh, I've, I've heard, uh, you know, one of my buddies, he's, you know, he's a parent and, uh, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have my kids under my umbrella, but if they want to go do their own thing, I let them, I live, you know, but they're always welcome back under my umbrella. Um, but I let them go and let them be and let them be a kid, you know, and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, how many parents are, you know, holding so tightly onto their children? <gasps> you uh, uh, watch out, you know, like all this stuff. Um, it's important to let people grow, you know, to let people grow, to let people experience things. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was another part of the book. I think the guy, the author was like Jonathan something, but he would do something where he would send out his daughter to go get bagels. Uh, and he lives in New York. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would go out and get bagels, and he would let her go out by herself. And she's like 10, 11 years old or yeah. something. But she would get, you know, he, I think he had a GPS watch yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she wasn't fully by herself, but for the most part, right. she was. But yeah, but that's why he taught her, like, hey, if you get lost, you know, yep. go back to where you know where you're at mm-hmm. and then restart. And there you go. But, he, but he was like, you know, if I keep holding her hand, you know, taking her everywhere with me her whole life. Yeah. She's never going to be able to wow. know how to go get bagels on her own or what is she going yeah. to do in college? I can't be with her everywhere. So yeah, yeah, I guess there's pros and cons to everything, but you know, how, how do you sit there and be a parent? And I'm not a parent, you know, just a, I got two dogs, but you know, how do you go say, Hey, yeah, go down the road in New York city, which I've never been to, Well, I went through it once, but you know, and go get bagels for me and come back. I'm from New York. Yeah. I, I thought you were. That's yeah. You, I thought I yeah. To ask that. yeah. You hear my accent, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> probably vice versa. I'm from, I'm in Virginia. So okay. <laughs> they called out of my accent a little bit too. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that even being a parent, it's like, eh, you know, even in today's age, like, I don't think I'm going to send my daughter down this road. And I'm, you know, so I don't know. Well, yeah, no, I hear you. It's gotta be like, go. it's gotta be a, a balance, I guess. No, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's go. Uh, let's let's circle back though and get back into your movie list. Though. So, um, I saw you had Shawshank on there. And yeah, Shawshank. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great movie, Shawshank Redemption. For mm-hmm. not seeing it, yep. go see it. 
But um, I wanted to ask that, you know, when did you write the book? Did you say 2018, 2019? Yeah, the end of 2018, it, got, it came out. Yeah, so, you know, it's, you know, I remember watching, I forgot when Sawshank came out, but I remember yeah. watching it when I was younger. Yeah. And I remember re-watching it, you know, as I got older. And it was like, yeah, it slaps mm-hmm. different. Totally different experience. Yeah, yeah. dude. I mean, yeah. is that kind of what you were going through too? Like, you know, like you know, yeah. like older movies, yeah. like, like especially going through what you're like, mm, this is, this yep. is, bro. Yeah, Shawshank especially, you know, I, uh, I did watch that from a completely different perspective. And I looked at that from Andy's perspective and how he was wronged and, you know, kind of that same message of the Count of Monte Cristo, very, very close comparisons between the story of the Count of Monte Cristo and Shawshank Redemption. Here's a guy just living his life and, you know, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. He gets accused of doing something wrong, didn't even do it. And he's learning, you know, how to, um, how to work through that, you know, and, and what is it like when you're not treated fairly in life, sure. you know, and people, you know, that's just the reality. Sometimes we're just not treated fairly. And, you know, kind of walking through that. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what I walked through right there. So, you know, I, like, <clears throat> like I said earlier, you know, you had Toy Story first, Wreck-It Ralph, then Sawshank. Mm-hmm. And then I know, I noticed at the end of the book, uh, it was like Cinderella and I think The Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And so was there a typical order of the movies yeah. you put in for a reason? Yep. Or was mm-hmm. it just, okay. It was, it was a very magical way. No, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I originally was going to do it chronologically, um, you know, which was in the timeline. Uh, and then I was thinking about alphabetical. And then ultimately what I thought of was themes. Um, and it starts off really light um, as, as a book. It starts off really light, inviting, um, kind of fuzzy. Yeah. And then it actually goes deep um, as you continue on. Um, you know, I'm a horror fan. I love watching horror movies. There are horror, mo- there are horror movies in here. Um, that I talk about and you know uh, that's that's when it goes deep you know and that that's the genre that I do believe uh, has the potential to go really deep um, to go to places where other genres just can't go like they kind of push the uh, the threshold I guess is that the word yeah yeah Yeah. I mean you know when it comes to trauma whatever you know trauma and and even storytelling have you always I'm a huge have you always liked them uh, you know, when I was younger, I was like super terrified. Um, but then, uh, but then I, you know, uh, grew up a little bit around, I'd say around 18, 19. That was when I like really, really had a love for horror films. Uh, you know, one of my favorite directors, Scott Derrickson directed Sinister, um, Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, yeah. So. Is, that, is there one that's actually, since you, for people who love horror movies, is there actually one that you like? That was actually scary, or you just kind of know what you're getting into all the time. Yeah, I mean, horror movies are scary. You know, um, there are there are certain types of horror movies that I just don't really watch. You know, like I'm just not interested in, like the paranormal activities. I think are just stupid um, because <laughs> they just don't they just don't have a story. You know, it's just like you go to a house and then all these things happen, and okay, I'm scared. Whatever. Yeah. Um, there is maybe a thrill to it, you know, and some people like get that experience. Okay. You know, we all have our opinions about movies, <laughs> um, but specifically, um, you know, when it comes to horror films, a movie that really struck me was The Babadook. I saw um, that was in here, but I never watched that one. It's an Australian film, independent right. film. Okay. Phenomenal horror movie. Um, really, really spoke to me, especially during that, you know, traumatic experience and traumatic time that I went through. It's a story about grief. It really is. It's a whole entire story about grief. The monster is a representation of her grief. The yeah. um, it's an allegory. The whole thing, and uh, it has a happy ending, you know, which I appreciate. Um, oh, it's good. And uh, so, you know, it's it's a great horror film. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, some people. I don't know. I've not some people, but a lot. Of, I guess the the narrative is that a good horror movie's got to have. You know, obviously gory and blood and killing mm-hmm. and you know like the teenage sex scenes and because mm-hmm. yeah, that's what the typical like fridays and whatever you see but you know uh somebody asked me the other day like what was the scariest movie i'd ever mm. and you know i had to think about it for a minute and i you know i said blair witch project 
Okay, yeah, sure. And uh, and I, th- I don't, I don't think I ever watched. I think there was a second or third one. Maybe it was a second. Okay, but yeah, the very first one that came out, and I think this may have been nineteen. Yep. Nine, two thousand, something like that. Yeah, I yep. was in fifth grade or something. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's why I need to fact check on this podcast. Somebody look it up for me. So, but anyway, I was young, and I remember just, but there was no. You know, there was none of that in there, like gory and blood and like, you know, slash movies and slasher movies. And it was just like made so much sense that this could be real. Like it was taken like from that video camera footage and then like the scariest port, part, spoiler alert, you know, that guy dancing in the corner or whatever at the end of it. It's like, yeah. I remember just being like done or but the movie finished. Like, yeah. That's, that's kind of scary, man. Yeah. Yeah. Is that real? Like, is this real? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think my point, I guess my point is of all that is that you don't really need to have the slashing and the mm. gore and just the, the mm. actual monsters and the paranormal activity or the, what the, yeah, 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 yeah. actually make a good scary movie. Yeah. 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 I, I think scary movies um, are really creative. I think they're super creative. Uh, if you talk to like amateur um, filmmakers or people that are like trying to get into film, mm-hmm. um, they start with horror movies uh, yeah. because you know, they're low budget and you can be super creative. Yeah. Yeah. I had this theory one time I was talking to my friends that, you know, why don't we create a horror movie? You know, just like somebody film it, somebody write it. I mean, you don't need a lot, but usually, you know, even if it's a trash movie, a lot of people go and watch a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> just because, like some of them are expected to be really well done and some of them are kind of expecting, all right, it's just going to be another slasher movie, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, but I was just like, man, this, maybe not even to get rich, but at least get our feet wet, like you just said, into the film industry. And yeah. That never happened, but it was just an idea I had at a point. But I thought it was yeah, really yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I guess, but that makes perfect sense that if you are trying to get into the game and the film game, start mm-hmm. maybe make by a horror movie, even if you don't like them. I mean, yeah, yeah. they're low budget. You can be super creative. Literally, use your imagination. You know, if you ask anybody, they'll they'll come up with a horror film idea. You know, pretty quickly. <laughs> Yeah, because you can go, you know, you can shoot for the moon and what go for the stars on it because there's really no limit as far as a horror yeah. movie is, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know what the last horror movie I watched recently was. I think I watched the uh, the most recent Halloween. Okay, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, back yeah, in- I got I to gotta see that. I haven't seen it. I've seen Scream. Scream was awesome. Oh, the new one? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, like, it was awesome. It's like the original Scream? Uh, no, the new one. Yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of like a... Was it like it as good, I guess, is what I'm asking? I don't want to spoil what it was because they okay. talk about it in the film. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's got a cool ring to it, like the way that they describe what the movie is. Yeah, I'm, one, cool. I'm one of them guys that I don't mind sitting down to watch a horror movie, but I usually only do it like if there's other people around. Like, Yeah, with friends, yeah. Yeah, you no. know. And yeah, and I think that's what makes the horror film experience, experience awesome, especially at a theater. You know, because everybody's getting scared in a safe uh-huh. space. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I, you know, Wes Craven, one of my favorite quotes of all time when it comes to horror films, um, Wes Craven said, horror movies don't create fear. They release it. Ooh. You know, I thought that was pretty powerful because I was just like, wow. And like how I feel sometimes after watching a horror film, I feel pretty light, honestly. You know, I feel like I got a lot out. That's just me. Wait, 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 how do you mean? Like you got a lot out, like, yeah, like I got a lot out. Like, you know, it just feels like there's almost like a, you know, like a thrill and then kind of like laughter at the end. Right. You know, almost like after, after the scare or after like any of these, you know, sort of things is like in the theater, especially and sometimes you'll hear a giggle or two <laughs> and you'll just be like, wait, why are people laughing? It's yeah. because they're like kind of letting out some of the stuff, you know, some of the fear or whatever. Yeah. I think, the last movie before oh, this is probably yeah this was obviously pre-pandemic i went and saw the newest it, it too in the oh yeah yeah yeah. and i remember like laughing at some kind of stuff and you yeah know, no even yeah. I, I did see the the uh the first it too in a theater in charlotte and i remember he was doing his little dance or whatever. <laughs> was, you know i was laughing about that I'm yeah like, i was like what's going on here like <laughs> again i think horror also has a way to create comedy you know, in such a way, like you can create such a relief for an audience. Like great example, Get Out. I don't know. Have you seen Get Out? Is that? That's the one directed by Jordan Peele. Oh, it's a great is movie. Is that the uh, interracial couple? Yes. I think I have seen it. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember I've seen parts of it and I quit watching it maybe. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. It's great. I mean, if you rewatch it, anything. But anyways, it's a great example of how it's horror 
And then he uses comedic relief as well um, at like different parts because horror, you're at such an intense place. You know, you don't want to be at that intense place the entire time. So like the tone in which comedy is used or like anything else, like a comedic relief in a horror movie. I mean, that is great. You know, that's a great thing to do. Did you ever watch those? I think the Wayne's brothers did them, like not another scary movie or whatever they were called. Yeah, scary movie, scary movie scary one, movie. two, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just yeah, stuff yeah. like that. It was kind of scary. Yeah, they'd have like that. yeah, it was kind of stupid. <laughs> like I, I rewatched them and then I was just like, oh my gosh, I watched this when I was younger or whatever. It was like yeah, yeah. Like that one Butler guy or whatever. He's like, take my strap. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just like that's the most. Oh man, movies. I remember, but it's like, <laughs> what are we? Yeah, what is yeah. It's not even scary at all, but it's yeah. kind of like I know what you're saying though, but like yeah. Yeah, a little comedic relief and mm-hmm. but yeah, those movies are kind of dumb, but they're kind of <laughs> yeah, like, no, they're funny. Yeah, there's good raunchy comedy. Like I rewatched Old School the other day. Okay, and yeah. It, like what I was talking about, dude. You get something new out yeah. of it and stuff, but it's just like yeah. you pick up on some things that I missed before. And it's, yeah, this movie still holds up, I guess. You know? Yeah, like, no, I like think. Dodgeball and oh, God. yeah, yeah, can't go wrong. <laughs> so I mean, with your list, you know, do. You, do you go towards, or when you were watching these movies, when you're, yeah. like, did you find yourself resorting towards or moving towards a certain actor, or actress, or was it just more of the theme of the movie? And it was the themes of the movies, especially um, immersion of the movies. Um, you know, some like one movie has a really special place in my heart Real Steel with Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah. It's a real, is that yeah, the- really special. Yeah. yeah. Fight- Fighting one robots. where he's robots. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched them. Yeah, you know, uh, it just has a special place in my heart. Um, but uh, yeah, man. What about? I saw you had Groundhog Day on there, and that that movie, I love Phil. it. Phil, yeah, Hunk Tony Phil, <laughs> Bill Collins. <laughs> did you yeah. ever? Uh, did you ever watch Palm Springs? Yes, with uh, Andy Samberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was good. It's got the Groundhog Day kind of feel to it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, like that. You know, you're talking about that movie, like resonated with me a lot just being mm-hmm. in, in what he was doing and stuff and it's like yeah life actually be like yeah the same day over and over and yeah over years yeah you know and, and the story of groundhog day is really to talk about the monotonous you know the monotony sort of 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 what his personality was it was just constantly he was doing the same thing he was a miserable guy he was as cold as the weather was you know he was just a cold dude and then all of a sudden you see him grow you know, as the days go on, you know, he's saving a life and you're just trying to save a life. He's doing all these things, he's learning new skills. He's trying to grow and, uh, you know, love, you know, love this other woman and like all this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's lessons there, too. Was that was there a, a thing like when you got to, you know, you were down, obviously, and you finally started seeing yourself come back to a positive. Was there a movie that you're like, all right, I'm about to bring my A game up. I'm on my way up now. Like then he was like, I'm it's time to get out of this funk that I'm in. The Babadook, um, you know, comes to mind. Yeah, because uh, it it just really like spoke my language, um, and it just really related to me um, in the way that she was shackled by grief. She was shackled by a lot of the pain and the grief that she had been through, and she was operating from that place. She really was. She was operating from that place of pain, from that place of grief, um, and learning to overcome it. You know, really, and that that really helped me. That really helped me learn learn all that. So. I like that, man. Yeah, yeah. Cause, you know, you know, I've always been a movie guy. Like, I, you know, it, my one of my first memories was three years old going to watch the Michael Keaton Batman movie. Like, I, yeah, even like my mom would say, like, you know, I was kind yeah. of a hyper kid or whatever, but she would take me to go see it. Yep, that was the only time she ever like really saw me like kind of sit down and be like, watch yeah. it. And you know, at three years old, I probably really had no idea what the story was. Or I just it was Batman. I was like, oh, Batman. Yeah. You no. Know? And, but you know, from then on, I've always just found myself like, if a new movie comes out, you know, even if it's getting bad reviews, mm-hmm. I want to watch it, even if I don't watch yeah. it when it first yeah. comes out. Just, yeah. Whatever. And even I usually watch them, most of them, all the way through. There's some that I've kind of just yeah. like, ah, this is done. Yeah. But, you know, but there's little pearls and gems I usually pick up, you know, mm-hmm. throughout them. Yeah. Usually, like, if I see something, I'll pause and I write down a little quote. Or, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and I think, you know, back where you were saying about, um, you know, criticism, like film criticism, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's got bad reviews or whatever, like I think film criticism is important. I also think that 
this movie or whatever movie it is was created by somebody and they put effort into it and they were it was created not only by just one person but a whole crew of people Mm -hmm. that tried to create this project so it deserves at least some sort of respect you know it doesn't uh deserve to be trashed you know what i'm saying like there there have been movies that have been like review bombed um like dumb and dumber has has been review bombed and like um one like Sinister Two, which was a sequel towards uh, Sinister, which was directed by uh, Scott Derrickson. Um, it was review bombed, like all these all these films. And uh, I don't know, I thought they were good. You know, I, I didn't think yeah. they were they were bad movies. Yeah, you know, that's one thing I've learned recently too. Just exactly what you just said that you know filmmakers and the crews they just don't make a movie just to make it. Hey, well, let's make a trash movie for the hell of it. You know, no big deal. Yeah. Whatever. They actually make it because, you know, it's either for a certain audience or they're actually putting into their thing. Like, Hey, I think this might be a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, the first thought comes to my mind with that. Didn't, uh, Todd Phillips, didn't he make a road trip and the hangovers and okay. which I think Todd, uh, road trip. I don't know if you remember that, but it got, I don't remember the reviews, but it was, I was pretty young when it came out, but right. hangover movies did pretty well. And, but then he yeah. made, then he made Joker, you know, and it was wow. like, yeah. And I, I, oh, is that Todd Phillips? Oh, that's his name. Yeah. I hope I'm getting that right. So anyway, yeah. then, then he made Joker and, you know, people were like, why is this guy making Joker? You know, he mm. made Hangover, he made Road Trip. Wow. Yeah, and, and then, you know, what, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is Joker. I was, people were worried. Grand slam. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, even coming, following up Heath Ledger. As Absolutely. As Joker is like, this guy, this movie is going to be trash, but it came out. I, I, I think, didn't he get a grant or is it an Oscar? He got an Oscar for it or a Grammy? I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, he but might not, have maybe nominated. Yes. But it was a great movie. That, that was my whole point. It was great. Even, and yeah. I thought it was going to be trash. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is is a baller. He's, he's a great actor. Hey. Uh, there's another movie, uh, You Were Never Really Here, that's starring uh, Joaquin. Is that where he goes and like beats up a lot of people and or something? Something like that, kind of. I feel um, like I've watched that. He's got a beard. In it. Yeah, I more watched it. Yeah, he's got a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch it. So his performance, I feel like in that film, got him the role for the jo- for Joker. Really? Uh, because yeah, I really do feel that way. Because he he went to such deep like depths, you know, of like different kind of emotion and all that. Um, that I I feel like that was the role that like really helped him become Joker. Well, you I, know? I read some stuff for and he's actually was going trying to uh become the joker doing filming and stuff you know he lost all that weight and wow and he said like even losing all that weight that he did because yeah was getting it that yeah he noticed that his mind went down some dark yeah. and stuff and he was actually writing journals and stuff and it was like yep. hey man you know like you know he yeah. was putting himself into that mindset just by like how dark he got and not eating yeah, yeah. But what uh and speaking i think he was actually talking as not serial killers but you know people yeah. saying asylums or something yeah so, and um you know same kind of universe, different actor, Christian Bale in The Machinist. Yeah, perfect. Uh, he lost a ton of weight and just had like an apple and tuna fish. Like that was it. That was his day. Yeah, you know, he, he did that. Then he gained all that weight. Was he a uh, Dick Cheney in that one movie where he got real fat? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Dick Cheney, I hope that sounds right. Her, yeah, I think it's it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or even um, Mr. Matthew McConaughey in uh, – the Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. He was super, super skinny. Some actor. intense, yeah, some intense acting. Just, yeah, I mean, to put your, to say, hey, I'm going to put my body <laughs> like this and. On the line. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I couldn't imagine it, you know. Yep. You know, I, yeah. Um, yeah, like wrestlers and stuff, like in wrestling. I never wrestled, but, you know, I had a bunch of friends that did. But, yeah. you know, they were having to lose weight just to make, you know, make weight for the math. Yeah. It was like running in trash bags and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're telling me like, I got to get down to a hundred and, you know, I usually <laughs> weigh in about 170, 175 pounds, but yeah, I got to lose 20 pounds just for this role. Yeah. More than that. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where I was really going with that point. It was no, like, it's just, it's no. just, it's awesome just yeah. put in that type of effort and greatness mm-hmm. to become what they're doing. That's why Absolutely. they're masters of the crafts. Absolutely. I noticed in, yeah. your, in your book that you had a lot of the Marvel movies yeah, a few of them. Did you always, well, yeah, you had a few of them. Did you always, you always lean towards the Marvel comics rather than like, you know, like Joker and the new, or obviously the new Batman just came out or even the Dark Knight mm-hmm. trilogy. 
Was it just something with the Marvel themes that you like more or what? Yeah, I mean, the MCU is cool. Um, you know, I definitely, uh, I think right as soon as, I, I might get some hate for this, but uh, I'm not looking forward to Doctor Strange 2. Um, I'm not looking forward to it. There you feel. <laughs> um, I will explain why. Okay. But the MCU, um, you know, I think it's really respected. Uh, it should be respected. You know, there are a lot of directors that have come out and said like, this isn't film and like all this stuff. Um, Francis Coppola came out and like Martin Scorsese came out, like all these big filmmakers came out and they were like the MCU. It's just the same thing over and over. Yeah. But I, I do think that there is, there's something really tremendous that the MCU has done uh, for the film industry. They've created a universe within Mm -hmm. films and i think different companies production companies are trying to adapt that um you know especially dc is trying to catch up you know and all, right, all these, say. yeah all these places are trying to catch up and all that i think the mcu is cool um the reason why i'm not looking forward to dr strange 2 is because and if you want to get into this discussion i don't know if you want to but there we go down uh, there, man. Okay. here wow. my favorite director which i said scott derrickson he directed dr strange one he was set to direct Doctor Strange 2. And he came out during Comic Con with Kevin Feige. You know Kevin Feige, president. He's the president of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, no, no, I didn't know that. He, he came out during Comic Con and Scott goes, Doctor Strange 2 will be Marvel's first horror movie. Yeah. And it'll be rated R or something like he said, he said like this epic thing and you can see in the video, like Kevin Feige backs up a little bit, does like a double take uh -oh. and, and then he comes out and he goes, it will have elements of horror. And then he was interviewed the next day and he was like, yeah, it's not going to be a horror movie. Like Scott said, it's going to be like, you know, elements of horror, kind of like ET or like poltergeist, you know, and like all this stuff. And, and then a week later, guess what happens? Bye bye, Scott. They got rid of him. They got rid of him. Creative differences. So, I mean, Sam Raimi, no hate on Sam. No hate on Sam Raimi. He made some awesome Spider Man films. He knows what he's doing. But I'm just, uh, I don't know, man. Blade is my favorite Marvel character. And they've already said Blade is going to be PG 13. They've already come out and said Blade's going to be PG 13. Is that just because they can attract a wider audience? Yes. Is that what Matt Reeves did with the Batman? It was PG-13. But it was pretty dark, so it was PG. Did you watch the new Batman? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, I loved it. It, too. Yeah. it was still dark as a PG-13 movie. Yes. But... I don't know. But I, I mean, it, it, you know, that's my theory is that Marvel just makes, you know, you know, with Deadpool as an outlier, I guess, but that's why they make it PG-13 to attract the younger kids and the families yeah. and stuff. And, you, mm -hmm. it's, you know, when it comes down to it, it's money. Right. It's everything else in life. but The broad audience, you know, rather than just North America, right? The whole world. Yeah. Um, you know, they've already said Deadpool. Uh, they're sticking with Deadpool 3. They're going to make it R-rated. Oh, you got to. Um, you know, but uh, they've come out and they've said that Blade is going to be PG-13. And they've also outed my guy on Doctor Strange 2. I'm not trying to say that everybody, you know, this is just how I feel right now about the MCU. Yeah. You know, and there there's a part of it where i'm just like creativity or tickets you know and i'm just i weigh more on the side of creativity you know creative integrity so well i agree 100 percent. i mean you know they've made so much money you know yeah just with all their other movies so why not take a chance you know and they're not and most people are still going to go see it anyway, just because it's yes. the Marvel Universe. Yep. And I agree with you because, you know, be creative. Let something shine. You know, do a new yeah. idea. You know, if you keep sticking yeah. with old stuff, you know, it's like with the definition of insanity, you keep doing the same thing, you'll get the same yeah. results, you know? Yeah. Go outside the box a little bit. Push the limits. Why not? They're trying to make a whole bunch of money from Doctor Strange, too. They are marketing this thing like crazy. I mean, why, why are they putting doing all that i mean you know how i forgot was there 26 of the movies before and plus the tv shows now on disney plus i mean yeah they just need yeah. that amount of money is that is that what it comes down to you get into that corporate america type of thing kind of what you're saying yeah. it's like doesn't matter money who cares yeah and like here's a human being that had a vision you know and and i'll be i'll be honest with you like he had a vision and i wanted i wanted to see that 
you know? Yeah. And, and he's, he got outed for the project and like, yeah. I mean, he's created a new movie's coming out directed by Scott, written by Scott, all this stuff. And his partner he's coming out in June, it's called the black phone. It's going to look great. It's, it's good. It's a feature film. It's going to come out. It's going to get a worldwide release or whatever, North American release. But, uh, I'm just, I'm disappointed in that. Am I going to see Dr. Strange too? Probably. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, you know, that's just how I'm feeling right now about the MCU. That's just where I'm at right now. Hmm. You know? Yeah. And you know, and I don't disagree with you. I mean, just because like, like I just said, I would, you know, they, they, they have plenty of money. So why not take another step and see what they can come up with? That's different. I mean, yeah, but yeah, I mean, do you think others are going to feel in the same way as you are about it? Or I think when I think what's really going to uh, break the straw is when Blade gets announced as PG thirteen. Like they they already said it, but I think when it really comes out and when it really says PG thirteen, everybody's going to go crazy, and they're oh. going to be like, "This right. Blade is supposed to come out." I did hear about that. Uh, who's it got? Muhammad. Movie. uh this is uh maharsha ali maharsha ali that's yeah it. great great choice um the thing is is i mean you have you seen any of the blades you know I from uh Wesley uh, snipes um yeah that one yeah i saw yeah. the first blade and what's the one with ron reynolds in it was that the second or third yeah no, that's the second yeah so maybe i saw the first two mm-hmm. i did see the third one i'll remember there's blade trinity it's pretty good um but like I grew up watching those as a kid, and I was like, and no. honestly, he's my fa- he's my favorite. He's my favorite Marvel character, Blade. I just think he's so like awesome. He's he's just like the man, you know. He is the man, and uh, that's just where I'm at, you know. And I'm just like, if it's gonna be PG thirteen, and I'm just like, no. Then uh, then must the Snipes have some trouble? Didn't he get bankrupt or something? I have no idea. For some, yeah. I feel like I've heard that somewhere that. I know idea. Hey, but then after like all the movies, he went down a dark road and got ended up bankrupt. And oh, I don't know. Could be wrong. And then at one point, he wanted to fight Joe Rogan or something. I have no idea. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't make some of that up, but some of it <laughs> true. So yeah. But so who Blade is? I, I think you're the first person I've heard that says uh, Blade's your favorite Marvel character. Yeah, Blade is. He's just he's just awesome. You have a favorite DC character? Um. That's a really good question. I mean, I really like Wonder Woman. Um, I just do. I saw that was in your uh, book. Yeah, I like Wonder Woman a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of characters for sure. You know, I like the whole uh, the whole Watchmen series. That's really fun. The new one or Watch, the Watchmen? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I didn't see I the think... series. Yeah, that was the movie was great. Yeah, I like the the Watchmen film. One of the did. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. The series was different. A lot different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get a lot of spoilers, but just it wasn't terrible, but it was just kind of I guess when you watch the Zack Snyder version, then you go into that, you're kind of like, or I yeah, what's happening. Like, yeah, you know, you're like, hmm, different, different creativity yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But the Zack Snyder version, I mean, you know, he's able to bring in music, you know, in a really, in a really nice way. Yeah, I think his, his usage of music is, is great. All right. Well, Phil, we've been talking about a lot of movies, but um, I got one last question for you. I mean, I know you, I saw Apex Legends there behind you. I mean, yeah. you get, you're, you're a gamer too? I'm a gamer, yeah. Uh, what are you playing now? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of retired a little bit on Apex. So when my friends and I can get together, we are playing Dying Light 2. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's fun. It's, you know, just typical zombie. You can go around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh played that and I guess the other the what other games did I play? I went through uh damn, I guess that was the most recent game I've been playing lately. I was I was a big 2K guy for a while, NBA 2K. Like me and my friends would get on there and just basically lose all the time, but it was so <laughs> but, but yeah, the most recent game right now is Dying Light 2 and nice. Uh, but yeah. yeah, most of I just kind of resort towards like multiplayer games like that that we can all yeah, yeah. do. And I played the new Halo. Okay, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm it was fun, but uh yeah. But yeah, I try to stay away from the multiplayer stuff just because I go in there and just get crushed. You know? Oh man, yeah, it's fun. But then you're like, well, you know, I spent an hour just dying. For- <laughs> <laughs> and why would I do this? You know, what? Uh, I- yeah. If I can find a game with a good 
campaign multiplayer in it now yeah. or even just a solo campaign I yeah i bet that's what i've been yeah go for it i know you know um there was a new game i think it's called tiny tina's adventure or something that literally just came out today i think oh, never heard uh, it's the same thing as like borderlands it's like in the borderlands universe oh um yeah i heard it's good and then you got a ton of new games that are coming out um you know that that harry potter games coming uh, out a trailer for that Starfield is coming out, which is basically Skyrim in space, um, which is pretty cool. Overwatch 2 uh, is coming out as well. Uh, the the beta is actually, you can sign up for it. Um, that's another thing I do. I stream on Twitch. I love you know hanging out with people, playing games and all that. It's fun. It's nice, man. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. I'm going to write that down some note. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I went through a Fortnite phase. And yeah, Fortnite, yeah. Yeah, you know, I went there and this was pre-pandemic so when it was yeah. still hype i guess it's still in its hype i don't know dude they got I, rid of the building i i read that somebody sent yeah. that on instagram and it's just like oh we're back baby let's go <laughs> I'm like, no i'm not going back down this road. I'm, not, I'm not going back down this road. i don't care if it's there but <laughs> yeah i mean you know i remember getting my first win on there and i was like oh yeah. great you know and i think yeah. i got two wins in a row then after that it's awesome but then yeah. the apex for a while and yeah it's pretty fun but I had, it was just typical. Let me go in there and just get crushed there too. I just, I, I don't know. How, I mean, do you spend a lot of time playing when you twitch? Yeah, I mean, I played Apex for three straight years, uh, pretty much. Yeah, um, came out February of uh, 2019. Yeah, so I've been been streaming and playing, um, you know, and uh, kind of building a community on on that platform, which has been fun. Um, and I try to play whenever I can. Um, yeah, yep. yeah, Twitch is fun. I love Twitch. I thought love about people love playing games. It's fun. I, I might have to run this by you, not on here, but off the air. But uh, I wanted also, you know, with the podcast going, because, you know, start a little Twitch channel too, and just kind of just yeah. more fun and inviting rather than like competitive gaming. Just yeah. me to like talking to people as I play and get yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So I thought, I thought yeah. it'd be fun. Just because, you know, yeah. I, you know, between like when I'm home, it's either, you know, I guess, you know, ways, other ways I do for fun besides like, you know, I go to work, then I go to yeah. CrossFit come home it's either like hey what movies am i going to watch what tv show yeah. am i coming up with well, yeah talk about tv shows phil yeah <laughs> but uh or then you know just sit down it's like when my you know the boys call like hey i'm getting on right now we can go through yeah right now. It's like, hey it was real man there you go so that's awesome it's another outlet just keep me busy yeah yeah do you play on pc you play on xbox or uh right now xbox and okay. but I've been telling myself that for the last year that, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to start building a PC. So I've been watching yeah. all these YouTube videos, people there building you go. PCs and stuff. I was like, man, this would be so badass. You know, this yeah. is going to be fun. Yeah. So I think, yeah. I don't know if I'll actually play on PC, just, okay. but I would like to build a PC, then maybe yeah. I'll slowly go into it. And at least yeah. that takes me. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I'm playing Valorant right now on PC. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's really fun. Super precise game. Like, you can't miss. If you miss, you're, you're done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fun though. So all right. So we get so you got movies, we got video games, you wrote a book. I mean, is there anything yep. while you got the Twitch channel? Is there anything else wild and crazy you're doing out there? Um, TikTok's been fun. Uh, I've been having fun on there. And uh yeah. Yeah, just doing doing fun stuff. <laughs> Do you got a is there another book coming down the road, you think? Or I don't think so. Um I mean you know, I've, I've been asked that question. I, I'm like, I had to write and that's why it came out. Uh, I don't necessarily have that feeling again. I don't want it to be like from a place of like, Oh, I'm just creating a sequel or I'm just creating something else just to create something else that like has to come from a, a place of me, like feeling like I need to, or feeling like, yeah. Um, so yeah, mm. probably not. Uh, I had a couple projects I had one project and man, it was like a crazy project. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Um, and then it got canceled. <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was like a film proposal. And uh, like, it was it was big. It was like insane. And then the dude basically got like canceled. Like, <laughs> like I don't know where like all of his projects got canceled. And everything. Oh, I was like, oh, man. Bill, one last question. I mean, uh. I feel like I should probably already know the answer to it, but I mean, if you had a pick, I mean, are you a movie guy or a TV show guy? You know, like if you sat down and had to like, what's crush game of Thrones or whatever. Yeah. You know, I think TV is awesome because um, it's able to, you know, character development, right. Uh, if there's anything that's you're able to, 
delve into and a TV series is really good at it's character development. Oh my gosh, this person was like a jerk season one. And then all of a sudden become somebody else that you, you really like, you know, that they're awesome. And a TV show can really do that. Um, film has such a special place in my heart because, you know, it's telling a story. It's intentional about telling a story and taking you on a journey and kind of doing it in a shorter amount of time. Um, you know, to which a TV show just, you know, has a lot more time uh, to be able to tell a story. Um, I like movies, you know, obviously I'm a movie guy. Um, I also love TV shows, but, um, I, you know, I really love movies. Yeah. I just, uh, quick side, side note here. I just finished Euphoria. Oh, okay. I heard about that show. I haven't checked it out. It's I heard wild. It's insane, bro. It's wild. You know, I heard it's crazy. I was talking to, uh, somebody at the gym and, you know, the gist of it's like going through a high school. Yeah. Girls, you know, I saw you had mean girls on your, uh, your yeah, book. that's why yeah. I kind of, uh, spark, but yeah. anyway, going to a high school, high, at a high school girls perspective, kind of as a drug yeah. pill pop. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You no, know, but you know, you know, I'm 35 years old and it was kind of, you know, I don't think high school was this way for me growing up, you know, yeah, was, you know, but like people just like, you know, the sex and the drugs and the drama. Yeah. You know? I, just, I mean, I mean, it was really kind of what you were just saying. Like the first season, like okay, I get it, little drama, okay. Yeah. Got to the second season, like all right, we're just being over the top here now. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah. it's it's worth watching. I mean, yeah. No, I got I you. Kind of what, yeah, I kind of knew what it was going into it, but it was, yeah. just, it was like, I guess I'll check out the. I gotta see what happens to Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> She's okay on the next. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So. She's in Dyer, right? It's a real. Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 She's great. Yeah, I heard it's cool. She's great, by the way. And she just, you know, I don't know yeah. uh, uh, drug addicts, but yeah, she studied her well, but she did really well portraying one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched a little bit of Killing Eve, um, the new season. And then um, what else? There was one other show that I was watching. I forgot. Oh, Ted Lasso. I finished Ted Lasso. Love awesome show. Lasso. Oh my gosh. Can't wait for season three. Dude, like, yeah. I first, somebody told me about it. And yeah. I watched the first episode and I was and so I think I crushed the first season and maybe. It yeah. Did. And they're 30 minute episodes. And yeah, it was great. You no, know, he does a great job. I thought yeah. uh, the soundtrack was really good in it. Um, yeah. Upper and Sons. I think they put, there was a bunch of songs mm-hmm. about them. It just, yeah, it, it was com- comedic. Yeah. And it, yeah. The mm-hmm. drama. And it was just, yep. I don't know. Talked who, about it. Yeah. Dude, just so well done. One Jason my- Sudeikis actually had a lot of hands in it. Um, he did, you know, he didn't just do the acting, but he did a lot of the story too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Rebecca, the character in that show, talk about character development, you know, from the beginning of the season, she just becomes a totally different person, yeah. you know, by the end, um, everybody really, you know, yeah. you, you see Ted and he's all happy go lucky. And then all of a sudden some things started happening and you're like, what the heck, Ted? Oh my gosh, Ted, I thought you were this happy guy with like no problems whatsoever, you know? So. <laughs> Like, yeah. And they, yeah everybody's got problems i guess and they, they come out sooner or later but you know, yeah. yeah, i can't recommend that show if somebody usually yeah, that's show. what show they should be watching I, that's ted oh lasso. ted lasso yeah it's great great can't wait for season three i agree 100 i love you know i like uh, you know I, yeah i do like it because I, I, i'm trying to talk without giving spoilers you know what i just won't say anything because i'm yeah. gonna slip i know I was, I was about to say yeah, well, uh, i can't yeah. wait for <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right phil um all right man People want to find you. I mean, appreciate you doing this, man. This was a great time. I love yeah, it. this is awesome. Man. Pop culture and all that stuff. Anyway, if people want to find you, your yep. Twitch, your Instagram, yep. book, all that good stuff. How do yep. they do all that? Uh, JesusLovesMovies.com. Uh, there's a whole bunch of links and stuff on there. Um, the book is in all different types of uh, sort of, I guess, mediums. Uh, you know, it's in audio. It's in ebook. It's in print. Um, and you can find me social media, everything at fill that in. So that's TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, all that stuff. So fill that in. You're one cool dude, man. This was awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, it was great. Good deal. All right. Well, people, you know how to find them now. Go do it. All that good stuff. Uh, we're out of here. Be good to yourself.